everybody to drink the water and a little snack. That's good. I don't see Father Tim, so I think I lost him already, so I apologize for that. Um, uh, we did go check. Uh, so far, Urban's four tires are now flat, so that's good. <laughs> you, you don't know my car, so I, I got a little bit of time. <laughs> you want to know what kind of car I have? Uh-oh. Um, thank you for that. I, I wanted to... Uh, Urban and the guys did a nice job. Uh, there's a lot of information there, as you well imagine. And uh, he did a nice job of summarizing that for us and giving you a, a broad overview. And I'm sure 4.8 million seems like a great deal of money, but there's a great deal of need here. So we need to uh, be honest with ourselves about what you're facing and what's, what's there. Um, I want to go through... Still waiting. Is there something? I'll carry on. How about that? Um, we're moving into the needs assessment uh, portion of the presentation, um, which is which is my task to do. And basically, it answers the questions of: Okay, you've got all this space. How do you use it? And do you need it? Is it, the big issue for you? Um, it, it's like sometimes we own a big house. And as we look around and, and the kids start leaving us and doing some other things, we realize we don't need as much square footage as we did in the past or, or whatever, and we start evaluating that. So I wanted to, to see how you're using your facilities. The methodology we use is that we, we gathered information through individual surveys, which Father Ted mentioned to you, um, which, was, which was very, very helpful. Um, they basically filled that folder for me. So I read through all of those and did a summary, which you'll see in the, the final report. There'll be a summary of what the surveys told us. We did have two workshops, October 10th and October 17th, where you visit with me on two full day sessions and we talked about the various needs and how, you, how your ministries function and where they, where they meet. And we also, because we only had a few youth attending those meetings due to ball games and whatever, we had another youth session, which happened on December 2nd at uh, Bascom, and that was a great session with 38 youth that came to see us and talk to us about what, was, what we're doing. We basically asked the following questions. Um, what facility spaces do you use? When do you use those spaces? I wanted to see if you're having trouble scheduling your spaces, if they overlap, um, if, if things like that are happening. Are your currently used spaces adequate for your needs in terms of their size and their amenity? Basically, do they have water, fridge, or other, other storage of them? And are they accessible? And I then I started to get into your ministries themselves and say, do you anticipate growth in your ministry that would affect your space? In other words, are, are the spaces beginning to affect how your ministry is functioning? Are they too small? Are you crowded? Are people not coming because they can't get to you? How is that happening? And also, are you seeing a growth happening in the various ministries? that you're trying to achieve in the two parishes. And then we also ask people to dream. And that was a wonderful time. They dreamed on their papers, but also when we talked with each other individually, uh, they were very open in expressing some of the dreams they had for the parishes and where they thought they should go and some great needs that way. Some of the dreams were pie in the sky, big dreams. And you may see some of those here in a few minutes. And some of the dreams are just realistic dreams about I'm concerned for the church. And um, I like to see us grow, and I like to see us thrive. So it's an interesting, uh, heartfelt moments we had in all our workshops. And again, I want to say I thank you for being honest and open with me, and sharing with me from your heart, because I sense deeply that you love your church and that you want to see the best for it. So I, I appreciate that very much in terms of our time together. As we went through those three days, and I read through your reports, um, several concerns that I continually heard. Um, they kept repeating themselves, so they came pretty thematically. One was a concern for the elderly and the physically challenged. I don't want to group those together, but as I'm getting older, I'm starting to be, be the same. <laughs> so I, I, I apologize for that. But we are concerned about elderly people being able to get into our facilities, being able to come to our education classes, being able to come to fellowship, to come to those areas. And we're certainly concerned about the physically handicapped. As uh, our physically challenged, as, as Urban mentioned a minute ago, I don't think you have any facility that you currently own that's by code accessible. 
you have a minimal ramp, you have a, a few excesses that you can help people with, but you are not to code in any of your facilities to what they say you need for um, those who have physical impairment or have wheelchair bounds or other issues. As, as we're also finding in, in our church work, uh, we're mentioning and talking about the baby boomers, we're all getting older, uh, we're starting to need those things, and it's starting to affect our tenants. Um, we have the millennialists, also millennials, that are also coming behind us, which we'll talk in a few minutes. But our, our parishes and our churches are certainly getting older, certainly those who are faithful and who have attended churches for many, many years. And we want to be sensitive to their needs. Secondly, we heard a concern for staff efficiencies, increased privacy. Um, even non-staff people mentioned quite frequently that the mixture of office and rectory was just not working very well. And not because Father Kim is very gracious about it, but they are very concerned about the fact that they have to invade his privacy, basically. Your office is closed on Monday because you can't, you want to give him a day of rest and a day off. Um, you, you, you have to clean off his dining room table if you're doing a project so you can have his dinner. It's just very difficult to have the office and the rectory mixed as you're presently doing it. And I heard that from more of the people than just simply the staff people. And I would mention I've never heard from Father Tim. Um, so he's very gracious and very accommodating in what you wish him to do. But it's uh, very difficult for that to happen. I heard a great concern for parish life, fellowship, and I'll get into the word unity. Parish life basically meant that we, you have no place to gather. You have a gym. But the gym is too small. We, we, you rented this space to give your space place a, a big enough place to meet in a, in a gathering such as you have here. Uh, your gymnasium is the only large space and it's really too small. And as we hear, it's not air conditioned. It has a wonderful kitchen that only serves people three foot high. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure what this knee serving thing is, <clears throat> but I, I commend you for it. It's wonderful. Um, and so there's a real concern that you have nowhere to get together. I, I heard also people say to me, I, 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 I don't want to just go to church and look at the back of my, my brother's head and walk back out. Uh, all your worship facilities, all your worship facilities have no gathering space, no place to stay, no place to mingle, no place to gather. And I can tell you that the old days when pray, pay, and obey were enough for churches are gone. We need to live a Christian life. And for a Christian life, we also need to have that fellowship. We also have the need to have a sense of community. And I heard that from you. You said that to me, that you wanted some place to, to, to get together and to be, to be a, a family of God. I heard also about unity. There was a lot of talk about these two parishes or three parishes or five parishes and and why are we still talking about it? And why are we still doing it? And that's a decision for you to make. And I, I can't give you a comment over that other than to tell you I was confused. I, I constantly looked at you and said, oh, who are you? And who are you? And who are you? And why are you? And you're doing the same thing he's doing. I see inefficiencies. I see duplication. I see confusion even on your part as to who are you as a family of God. And I'll just express that as that. And you can deal with it as you wish. But there's some things to me, I think, that it was expressed to me, and I heard it quite clearly. I, I, got, I got to the point where I just simply said the North Parish and the South Parish, which being from South Carolina didn't sound very good because I started to think about the different things that we used to do. But um, I don't want you to be that way, and I don't want, I don't want 224 to be the line between either. I, I heard greatly that you, you, were, you wanted to get rid of that confusion. I also heard a concern for the youth. And we, and we were so concerned with the youth that we had another session to have them come back. We were really concerned that when, you, when your children are meeting confirmation, they're leaving you. They're saying, okay, I've done what I needed to do, I did what my parents told me to do, and I'm leaving the faith. Not just your church, but possibly leaving your faith. And that hurts you, and that makes you feel um, deep inside that something happened, something is wrong with all of that. Um, from the youth, I, I just simply heard that church is not what their parents think it is. And they want places where they can have fellowship and where they can invite their friends and where they can be themselves. And when you think about what you have currently in your parishes, you have no place that the youth can say, that is my space, as far as I can tell. 
And so they, they expressed to me a deep need to, to have that type of space. And then there was a concern always for the future. Where are we going? <clears throat> We're getting older. Um, our tenants is maybe declining. Um, are, are we sustainable? I think you've asked that question for many years now. Is, is this where we should be going? And, um, and, and what is it we should do? I, I wish I was a prophet. I wish I could give you all those good answers. All I can do as your consultants is to give you some commonalities and point you into some directions today that hopefully you can respond to and take action on. Okay? Some of the things I did find when I looked at your places, based upon the workshop you gave me, I prepared what's called a program of need. It's hard to see and you would see it in the final report, but basically I say, you need one office that has this much square footage, you need a secretary, so much square footage, a classroom of this youth size, and, and worship for 500, etc. and list the square footages, add those up, add walls, mechanical rooms, etc., and come up with the square footage you need for a facility. In the number that you see of 54,072 square foot, I added in a fellowship hall for 500 people. <clears throat> I did a worship center for 500 persons. I put in a youth room, I put in a blanket maker's room, a blanket maker's storage room, I put in a youth room, I put in a new commercial kitchen, <clears throat> I put in all those spaces in the program of need that you'll see in the report. And that totaled up to 54,072 square feet. You currently maintain and occupy 79,569 square feet. Basically 47% more space than you use or even need. When you projected the future of your church's ministry, you maintain and take care of 47% more space. <clears throat> now my parents and I, uh, my parents used to own a house in South Carolina, and one quarter of it was the living room. <clears throat> and the living room, my dad called it the funeral parlor because none of us could ever go into it because we couldn't touch the furniture in the room. <laughs> and, and basically, you're doing the same thing. You're, you, you bought a big house, but you're only using three quarters of it. Okay? When I, when I met with your groups, I said, where do you meet? The Emmaus room. 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 You always meet the Emmaus room. Why? Because it's really big. Because it's nicer. Because it has lights that work. It's got air conditioning. It's a nice space. Okay? You don't meet at the top of the building. You don't meet in other places because they are in good shape. So that was my first revelation. My second revelation was look at your worship environments. You have five worship centers. And I know a lot of them are inherited from blending parishes and some other issues. But I asked you, and these are numbers you gave me, what your current capacity in the churches are and what your largest attendance during a year. Largest mass, largest gathering, largest wedding, largest whatever. The numbers you gave me is you have seating capacity for roughly 1,912 seats in your five worship centers. Your largest gathering is 675 total. Okay. Now, some will say, well, when I go to All Saints on Christmas, it feels really full. Well, because you got 572, you're occupying 400 or roughly there. At 80%, you feel full. Okay. Now, these are numbers you gave me, so if they're wrong, I apologize if you work on those. So again, you're, you, except for all saints, all your worship spaces are underutilized in the use of their seating capacity. And basically, you're occupying 35% of the worship environments that you currently maintain, own, keep, etc. Okay? We then looked at the, the, the high points of ministry facilities that you have. Uh, Catholic, churches, Catholic churches have an interesting item called the rectory, where Protestant churches don't normally have those. <clears throat> and you combine those. So again, to re repeat what I've already said, your, your rectory and your office have an interesting lack of privacy for the priest by, by blending the two together. Your education space, which is really limited only to Parish Hall and, and uh, New Regal, is lacking amenities, technology, accessibility. Um, the elementary school superintendent a minute ago told me they wanted to spend money on this years ago, and it, it's, it is get expensive, and Urban showed you some of the money necessary to make that facility better. 
Fellowship, as I mentioned, no space large enough like we're gathering here today. And again, the gym lacks amenities, technology, accessibility. Worship, except for all saints, all spaces are underutilized. They have lack of amenities, technology, accessibility, lack of gathering spaces, and really a lack of consistency between them. Some have good sound systems, some don't. Some have bathrooms, some don't. The worship spaces are just all over the map in terms of what they have available to your, to your parishioners today. So we look at the map, and the map is interesting as well to look at. The distance between St. Patrick Church and, and New Regal Church is only about 5.2 miles between the two of them. <clears throat> because of all the merging, you, you have all these different uh, worship centers all over. But I was told you have 1,200 families, five worship centers, and one priest. If you don't know it already, you're killing your priest. Okay? And we may, we may chuckle about that, but you're killing your priest. And I said, everyone else, you're killing your priest. He's, he's trying to minister to all of you. He's trying to serve all these needs. He's running all over the place for all these facilities. And you're paying for and maintaining all these facilities as well. It's a very difficult sustainability model to keep. Okay. So what do we do with the information provided? What do we do with all that digestion of things? And, and there's a lot of it, but again, we're trying to hit high points so that you're not here all day. <clears throat> but what do we do? We wanted to give you options. And the options are, are such that you can give us your opinion on various opportunities to do something different or not do something different. Let me put that. <clears throat> we're going to show you eight options. I'm going to go through the options very carefully. Um, they will be on the walls behind us when we're done, and we'll, we'll tell you about the process we want to go through, but there are eight options. On the options, we've used some icons. We've used an icon for worship, cemeteries, fellowship halls, office, rectory, and education. And they're a little hard to discern, and I'll try to talk you through them as best I can, but those if you would agree with me, are really your six major elements of church. With me? We can debate small items of that, but those are six major elements, and, and where do we put those elements is always a discussion for us to have. Okay? So I'm going to take you through eight options, and we'll talk about what to do with the eight options. Okay? Option one, do nothing. Easy option. <clears throat> um, Irving gave you a report on the facility assessment of uh, 4.8 million, and just remember that as a base. Again, that's a number to bring all your buildings up to code, uh, take care of all your issues, make them be last longer, be less cost to you in the future, more energy efficient, make their environments equal, make them all accessible. Um, basically, make everything in the in the parish like it is. This one, this option is to say we're not doing any of that. We're just going to keep on keeping on. And someone mentioned that to me in one of the workshops. Let's just do nothing. That's your choice. So I wanted to give you that as a choice. <clears throat> that means that when the window breaks, you clock it. If the cell phone breaks, you fix it. it just, it's just stuff that it's not talking about making a major, major capital campaign to, to get things from correct. And that, I should have picked that earlier. Again, you have 79,000 roughly square foot, and you've spent nothing of a major investment. Okay? Number one. <clears throat> Number two is basically following the recommendations that uh, Urban presented earlier. I'll go ahead and click this one. Go ahead and spend the 4.8 million, and again, you would have 80,000 square foot. You would have all the facilities are up to code, all the facilities, all the worship centers are recognition, all the worship centers are equal in amenities. Um, everything is equal in terms of code. I would mention to you that there's one thing that Urban said today. We weren't, we didn't make any corrections in the spaces. So if you say I want this room to be bigger, or I want to make this bigger over here, or I want to make some adjustments to the room, those aren't quite included in the prices yet until we get into some more design work. This is just once you get this done, you spend 4.8 million. What you have today is what you will have when you're finished spending 4.8 million. It will just function better. Okay? 
and be more energy efficient, etc. I did include in this recommendation um, two X's on here. Um, the, the, the rectory at Bascom is a good rectory, and the office in New Regal is a good office. And the, the New Regal building is larger. If nothing else, I suggested in this one, make that decision. Let, me, let Bascom be the, the, off, the rectory, and let New Regal be the office. And give your priest privacy, and allow him to live in a space that doesn't have people in his home all the time. That was pretty easy, and actually this number will go down a bit, because some of the square foot, some of the sprinkler systems that you heard earlier would be going away because we would be separating office and living if, I, if we did this option. So that number would change a bit. Because when you look at the numbers, you look at I need 190,000 to renovate the rectory. Yeah, let's go build a new building. Mm -hmm. That's a house. Okay. Well, a lot of it's because of the commercial requirements of that house. So if you separate those, I can reduce those numbers down. Remember our numbers today, they're not quotes. They're not, I don't want you to be even talking about the number in terms of, I, I like 4.8 better than I like 4.6. <laughs> I want you to be looking at numbers in terms of scale and what you get for scale. There, there are references to us now. There's a lot more study to come later, but I want you to have realistic numbers so you're not fooled. It's basically the approach. Option three is to not do anything with the chapels and only focus our efforts on St. Patrick and, and all saints. I put the word decommission the chapels, and I don't, to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what that means. Does that mean we just simply ignore them? Does that mean we tear them down? Does that mean we sell them? I don't know what that means. It just simply means that the improvements required in the facility assessments we won't invest in. 